In the last video, we talked about one-to-one -one correspondence. So let's have a quick recap of what is one-to-one -one correspondence. If each item in one set can couple with a unique item in the other set, we can say there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets, and hence these two sets are equal in size. They have the same number of items in them. Cantor used this simple but powerful technique of one-to-one -one correspondence to prove that some infinities are bigger than others. To understand Cantor's proof in a more intuitive way, let's go to the world-famous Hilbert's Hotel, which has an infinite number of rooms inside of it. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Can a hotel with an infinite number of rooms ever run out of space for new guests? Your intuition might tell you that no, it's impossible. A hotel with an infinite number of rooms will never run out of space for new guests. That's the meaning of infinite, isn't it? You can bring in as many guests as you want. There's always going to be a new room for new guests because it has an infinite number of rooms inside of it. But that's what Cantor actually proved wrong. You'll be surprised to know that a hotel with an infinite number of rooms inside of it is not sufficient enough to accommodate a special case with an infinite number of guests. Welcome to our hypothetical Hilbert's Hotel with a countably infinite number of rooms, all of which are occupied. Suppose a new guest arrives and wishes to be accommodated in the hotel. What do we do? Well, we can simply move the guest currently in room 1 to room 2, the guest currently in room 2 to room 3, and on and on. So ultimately, all the guests would still have a room, and room 1 would be empty now for the new guest to be accommodated. Now, what if 10 new guests show up? No problem. Just move each staying guest to plus 10 room number of their existing room numbers. How about 10 million new guests? Easy peasy. Move each guest to plus 10 millionth room. So, for any number of new guests, say G, will never run out of rooms as long as we know how many new guests have shown up. In Cantor's terms, for a countable number of guests G, we can always find new rooms for them. Now, what if an infinite number of guests show up at once? Imagine a tourist bus that's infinitely long and has an infinite number of tourists in it, who ironically enough have come to see the world-famous Hilbert's Hotel. Do you think we can accommodate this countably infinite number of guests? It may sound impossible at first, but it is possible. Just move the person occupying room number one to room number two the person occupying room number 2 to room number 4, the person occupying room number 3 to room number 6. So basically, just move the guest occupying room number n to room number 2n, 2 times n. And as we know, 2 multiplied by any number is an even number. So all the existing guests will move into even numbered rooms. And all the old numbered rooms will be free for the new guests. So, all new guests will be moved to odd-numbered rooms. Simple. So, in Cantor's proof, this case signifies that size of the infinite set of all even numbers equals the size of the infinite set of all odd numbers. Now, let's move on to the next challenge. An infinite number of buses arrive, each carrying an infinite number of guests. Would it be possible to accommodate all this infinite number of new guests from this infinite number of buses in Hilbert's hotel? Yes, there is a way to accommodate them. A very old hotel staff named Euclid just remembered that in his early days in Egypt around 2300 years ago, he had proved that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. Also, Euclid pointed out a simple but amazing observation. All the powers of the prime number 2 are even. What does that mean? 2 squared is 4. It's an even number. 2 cubed is 8. Again, even number. 2 to the power 4 is 16. Even number. And on and on. So all the powers of 2 are even numbers. Now, except for 2, the powers of all the other prime numbers are odd numbers. What does that mean? Let's take the next prime number, 3. 3 to the power 2. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 is an odd number. Let's take 7. 7 to the power 3 equals 343. Let's take another prime number, 5. Take any power. Uh, 5 to the power 3 equals 125. Odd number. And it's a unique odd number. So, 
Euclid suggested to accommodate all the infinite number of passengers in this infinite number of buses in this manner. It's a three-step process. First, just like before, move each existing guest to the room whose number is twice their current room. So all the existing guests go into even numbered rooms. Next, number all the tourist buses with unique prime numbers bigger than 2, such as 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and on and on until infinity. Next, number all the seats in each bus with natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. until infinity. Now, tell the passenger of bus number 1 with seat 1 to move into room number 3 to the power 1. The passenger in seat 2 goes to the room number 3 to the power 2, which is 9. The passenger in seat 3 goes to 3 to the power 3, which is room number 27, and on and on and on. So all the passengers of the first bus go into the room number 3 to the power S, where S is their seat number. How about the next bus, the second bus? The second bus gets the next prime number, which is 5. In the second bus, the first passenger goes to prime number 5 to the power seat number, 5 to the power 1 equals 5. The passenger in seat number 2 goes to 5 to the power 2 equals room number 25. The passenger in seat number 3 goes to 5 to the power 3 equals 125 and on and on until infinity. Third bus takes the next prime number 7. The passenger in seat number 1 goes to 7 to the power 1 equals room number 7. The passenger in seat number 2 goes to room number 7 to the power 2 equals 49 and on and on until infinity. So even in the case of set of infinite buses with infinite guests in each bus, it's possible to accommodate all of these passengers in Hilbert's hotel. In terms of Cantor's proof, the size of all these infinite buses with infinite number of guests in each of them is the same as the size of the number of rooms in the Hilbert Hotel. So all counting number infinities have the same size because in all the above examples, we are able to establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the passengers of the buses and room numbers of Hilbert's Hotel. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two. And so, all these infinities are the same size. Now, in all our previous examples, each bus that pulls up with an infinite number of passengers has seat numbers starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, and on and on until infinity. So basically, we were just using counting numbers. But let me ask you this. What if a new infinite bus pulls up full of an infinite number of guests, but in this bus, the seat numbers are not counting numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Instead, each seat is numbered in decimal numbers between 0 and 1. For example, one seat number can be 0 0.1123768 and on and on until infinity. Or another seat can be numbered as 0 0.124867 on and on until infinity. Or 0 0.2453 on and on until infinity. Basically, there are an infinite number of seats on this bus, but what makes this bus unique is that each seat is numbered as a real number, not as a counting number, but as a real number. Now, we know there are an infinite number of real numbers between 0 and 1, and we also know very well that the Hilbert's Hotel has an infinite number of rooms in it. So the question then arises, can all the passengers from this bus be accommodated in Hilbert's hotel. Now, at first glance, it looks like, yes, it's possible. So, imagine you're the driver and you go to the reception and ask the hotel manager to arrange the logistics. But, to your surprise, the manager, a certain Mr. Georg Cantor, tells you, sorry, it's not possible. Obviously, you're perplexed and demand an explanation. So, Mr. Cantor explains. Basically, we know that there are an infinite number of seats. The list goes on and on until infinity. Let's choose seven of them randomly in this infinite sequence. Now, using Cantor's diagonal approach, let's take all numbers that lie on this diagonal line and make a new number. In this case, it would be 0 0.1256589, on and on until infinity. Now, let's apply a simple conversion here. Let's just say, add 1 to each digit of the above real seat number. 
So I convert this seat number to 0.2367690 on and on until infinity. Now, this new number was never there in the original list of seat numbers. Think about it. This number is different from all the numbers on the list. It's not the first number because the first place after decimal is different. It's also not the second number because the second place after the decimal is different. It's not the third number because the third place after the decimal is different. And on and on. So this number, 0 0.2367690, on and on until infinity, has not appeared ever before on the original list of seed numbers. So you can't count all the seed numbers ever. Now, we can simply add this new real number to the list of seed numbers. But using Cantor's diagonal method, this new list can then be used to create another real number that had never existed before in the original list. The cycle repeats on and on until infinity. There will always be a seed number that is a real number, but it was not on the list. In short, it's impossible to accommodate all the unlistable infinite guests from this bus into the infinite listable rooms of Hilbert's hotel. So yes, even though all infinities are, well, infinite, some infinities, such as the set of all natural numbers, are always smaller than other infinities, such as the set of all unlistable real numbers between 0 and 1. This result shook the very roots of mathematics, and hence science, because the building of science and scientific method stands on the base of mathematics. Cantor's discovery was so counterintuitive and shocking that he faced opposition from his contemporaries such as Leopold Kronecker, who had been his teacher at Berlin University. Kronecker publicly humiliated him by calling him a scientific charlatan, a renegade, and a corrupter of youth. Whenever Cantor applied for a post in Berlin University, he was declined, and it usually involved Kronecker. This continued, unwarranted humiliation for decades made Cantor very, very stressed. His medical records now indicate that most probably he also suffered from schizophrenia. Add to all this the poverty and malnourishment he suffered during the First World War. The great mathematician ended up in a mental asylum and eventually died a lonely death in 1918. But today, Cantor's set theory has become a fundamental theory in mathematics, and his proof that there are more infinite numbers between 0 and 1 than there are counting numbers is now part of standard mathematics curriculum. As Victor Hugo once said, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And that was our video for today. Thank you for watching till the end. Please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye.